So this video, i just like to show you a little bit about negative painting or, or using masking fluid. Maybe you'll have whiskers like of a cat or even people's hair with light shining on it. Negative painting just means painting around the shape, leaving it without paint there, <laughs> leaving it lighter. Putting the paint around the whiskers. It's kind of fun actually. Just a little tedious. When you get used to it, it's really better than masking fluid. This gets a better result because you have more control this way. Masking fluid, I'll show you that in case you're not familiar with it, but it's just a liquid rubber or latex type of thing. It's liquid, but then when you put it down on your paper, it dries in maybe like five minutes. It's like rubbery, and then you can paint over it. Once your painting's dry, you can peel it up. It's kind of handy sometimes to use, and in some cases it's really useful because it can be hard to, to negative paint everything. And just fade this out, match the wetness and connect it. So I'll just show you now the masking fluid. You can get like a bottle of masking fluid and sometimes they're not really all that good. I really believe that a lot of the time it's just because the bottles have been sitting too long somewhere and they get dried out. I've had masking fluid where I bought it and it's just clumpy and dry. It's not meant to be that way. It should be like liquid, like using cream or heavy cream or something like that. So this here, these are actually pretty good. I've had good, gotten good results from these. It's the P Pabia High Precision Masking Fluid Marker. Just make sure that if you buy one of these, it's a 0 0.7 millimeter because they have a bigger one and it's very big. But this is a really good size because it allows you to get a very fine point. You know, you can use the masking fluid from a bottle and use like a toothpick or a stylus or a ruling pen, something real fine and point, a fine point and just dip it into the bottle and you can put it on. But this works really nice because it's in the pen and it just continues to flow out. I had to press it down some first, make sure it's flowing. That looks good. It's coming out good. So there you go. See how it just flows and it'll just continue as long as the as long as it's clean and not dried out. It's a little thin, actually. And that's what I don't like about the uh, masking pin or the masking fluid is that they all look the same. The width of the line is almost exactly the same everywhere. It's only thicker right there because I went, I went back over it twice and negative painting. It's just a little easier to vary it so you can see like I made it wider up here and kind of tapered off, becoming thinner and thinner as it went this way. And it's hard to do that with the masking fluid. You can kind of do it with this, if you just barely press it, it does get thinner. So I'll just let that dry for 
a minute and then come back and I'll show you how it'll work when we paint over it. Okay, so it seems like it dried enough now. So let's just take a little paint over it. Now this up here, it came out really thick so it's not dry enough if I were to paint over that. Some of this actually may not have come out thick enough, which that is one problem with that pen that I have had. If it isn't thick enough, sometimes it's harder to peel off, pull off the paper. We'll just need to let that sit for a little bit. Let it dry, let the color dry, and then we can come back and pull the masking fluid off. It's kind of like wax resist in a way. You can take a, a wax crayon. The only thing with wax, you can't get it off the paper. But if you put wax down, it won't be a smooth line. But it's kind of fun to use planar painting. But you can see there what it does. It gets a nice texture. Actually, I've used that in some of my the Africa paintings. It just has a real nice texture, but you can't you can't get that wax off anymore. So it's stuck and you can't paint over that. You just have to be kind of uh, confident with it because once you do it, you can't change it really. While I'm waiting for that to dry, I'll just show you this here. I don't like doing this. Really, the best way is, to me is negative painting. If you have to, you could take a little exacto knife. Say you your highlight in your eye is missing. You can just come in with this and just real steep, like pointed right down toward the paper and just rub it sideways. There we go. Just get a little highlight for the eye. If you do this, it's best to do it when you're finished. Because if you try to paint over that, it'll not be good because it tore the paper really bad. And you could do like a little whisker or something, or hair. I really don't like doing this though, because it's not a clean line. It gets a little bit of texture. And I don't like tearing the paper because once you tear the paper, you can't really paint over it anymore. Either use the masking tape, put it down and scrub, or maybe this or the versus using like white opaque paint, which could be risky. I don't like using white opaque paint because it can mix in with the real nice pure transparent watercolor and that white can make the the watercolor look chalky and it can lose its brilliance because the transparent paint it just is so beautiful how it it allows light to go through it and hit the paper and bounce back out where if you have like an opaque paint like acrylic or white gouache or something, it doesn't allow the light to travel through the layers as well. It just looks more dull and flat. I don't use white because of that. I just love the beautiful transparent colors. They're so pure and brilliant. It looks like it's dry enough now to um, peel this masking off. So you can see it right there. The best way to peel it off is by using your thumb. And I don't like to do any other way. Because someone had like a rubber cement type thing that they were using. And one of my students and that seemed to kind of work. But 
it just has a potential to tear the paper. So I didn't like using that. So, but just make sure if you use your thumb, wash your hands real good because the oils from your finger might not be so good for the paper. Yeah, this just works because it doesn't tear the paper. It's just gentle and you can get, you can really feel it and get right in the perfect spot. Yeah, that worked pretty good. Yeah, there we go. So I've heard that this stuff can get stuck in your carpet, so maybe don't swipe it off on the floor <laughs> like I used to do. <laughs> yeah, so that's pretty good. You know, it's just a little mechanical looking, and that's what the difference, I think, between the the masking and the negative painting. Although these don't look too much different, really, but I could have done a little more variation with that negative painting, and it would have been a little more different. Anyways, I hope that that helps and give you some options.